And then you get to the ground floor, what do they label the floors below the lobby level? B, for basic, SB, SBB. Can I buy a vowel, please? What the hell, what's going on down there? <laughs> we have a perfectly good numerical system for when you're below zero. Perfectly legitimate. What are they called? Minus. Negative numbers, okay? Not a negative number to be found anywhere in America. <laughs> By the way, who do we think of as in, in the countries in the world who, who has the best sort of engineering going on? What country? Germany. Germany. I'm thinking Germany, right? Germany. Ger like Germany. German cars, German engineering, Ger Germany. Okay? Well, I have a photo from a, from a museum in Germany. Okay? It's a history museum. Let's look at the floor that's below ground level. Negative one! Science Museum. This is not a this is not a math lesson for visitors. That's just another day on the town in Germany. Negative one. It's not B, it's not SB, it's not SBB. I saw a headline the other day. I changed my views 360 degrees on that. illiterate congressman, <laughs> or this member of Congress understood exactly what he was saying. <laughs> that would be worse, wouldn't it? That would, you'd be using mathematical literacy in a diabolical way. <laughs> you need many people to think you changed your mind, but in fact you didn't. Okay? Another headline here. Half the schools in the district are below average. <laughs> schools in the district are below standards or below level. But instead of below average, this is a mathematically illiterate journalist. <laughs> Another headline, 80% of airplane crash survivors study the locations of the exit doors on takeoff. You're saying to yourself, ah, that's a good percent. I want to be in that percent. So next time I'm on an airplane, I'm going to read where the exit doors are. Because in fact, they may be behind you. Yes. Here's the problem with this statistic. Suppose, I'm just saying suppose, suppose 100% of the dead people studying where the location of the next door You wouldn't know because they're dead. So... It could be that studying with the exit doors gets you killed. You have no way to know this. Dead people don't talk. You've seen this about the lottery. State lottery is a tax on the poor. And it's said because people with less money spend a disproportionately higher fraction of their income on lottery tickets. That's not, I never believe this. Yes, that's true, that statistic is true, but this interpretation, I don't accept. The state lottery is a tax on all those people who never did well in mathematics <laughs> in school. That's what the state lottery is a tax on. You know who's fearless of science? Europe is fearless of science. They embrace it. I have a collection of currency, pre-euro currency. And when you, you collect this, you find that countries in Europe put their famous scientists on their money. That's Nikola Tesla in the upper right from Yugoslavia. Cohen had Copernicus. This on the bottom right is, is uh, Marconi, who, who developed radio. And we have this guy on the bottom left, Volta, Alexander Volta. Guess what we named after him? Oh. The Volt, thank you, not the car, but the, <laughs> the Saint-Exupéry. But you flip over the dock, the bills, 
This is the iconography of their trade. Love that sort of lightning bolt image on the upper right, Nikola Tesla. We've got the biplane with, say, a super ray. It, it goes on and on. This is uh, even Iraq. This is 1, 10,000 dinars. And it's a, uh, this is Ibn al Ibn al Haytham from the 10th century who figured out how sight works. People used to think that you beam light out of your eyes and it would go to your target. And that's how you could see it. He figured out no sight is a passive thing. We've got a little Darwin down there in the Bank of England. This is Romania on the left. That money is made of polymer. It will not crease. And they had a total solar eclipse across their country. They decided to put it on their currency. That's the bottom image. You see the path of totality. The upper image, I don't know what that is. That's artist gone, gone astray. <laughs> That's an artist giving a little too much leeway on how to capture the solar system. But nonetheless, we can celebrate it. More money. We've got Euler in the upper right. Galileo. Gauss in the middle right. Faraday. Um, Pasteur. And my man Isaac Newton in the middle left. Can't argue with this. Now, wait a minute. Gauss. That's Germany. Ten Deutschmarks. Karl Frederick Gauss, famous mathematician. I can zoom in on that. What? Whoa! German currency had a mathematical distribution function on it. <laughs> Look at this. Pi is in their currency. Wonder why they make good engineering problems? <laughs> Suppose I went to Congress and I said, I'd like to put math functions on our currency. What, what do you think they would say to me? <laughs> do we have a scientist on our money? Yeah, we got we do, we got Ben. Good old Ben. I'm figuring, okay, if he's a scientist, where's the iconography of his science? He was the world's leading physicist in experiments in electricity in his day. He ought to at least be a kite. Okay? I'm looking, no, no, okay. A key, no, no. How about a lightning rod? He invented the lightning rod, which saved people's lives. It especially saved churches. Why did it save churches more than anything else? Anybody know? Steeples. They are the steeples. They're the biggest structures of any town at the time. Now they're the littlest. But the biggest structures at, at the time. You put a lightning rod, the lightning doesn't hit the steeple, it saves the church. Do you realize at the time, he was accused of thwarting the will of God by his invention of the lightning rod. <laughs> now, I thought a little too long about that concept. <laughs> and I realized, is it really true that the power of the God that you worship can be thwarted by Ben Franklin? <laughs> Is that really true? That, that's kind of curious, right? That the guy puts up a, a metal stick and God can't figure out how to still strike you down? <laughs> damn that man! Damn, damn! What? Who is it? I think your God would figure out a way around that problem, right? So, so, been, so obviously he's not on our money for his electricity. He's on there for being a founding father. We have no science on any of our currency. I have three slides left. I want to show you something. This next image is a map of the world with the area of each country drawn in such a way so that it equals the area of that country on the globe itself, which means it's a regular map. Okay, so <laughs> what I'm now going to do is distort the shape of each country according to how much science is conducted there. So some countries will get bigger, some will get smaller, depending on how much science, peer-reviewed research science is published out of that country. Let's take a look. Whoa, hey, the United States is looking fat and happy there. Hey, hey. One of the great tragedies of this map is that Africa practically disappears. <laughs> That is Africa down there. And look what happened to Japan. Here's that little purple little smidgen on the right. Bada bing! 
This is not only a map of the science that's conducted, it's a map of the wealth in the world. They strongly correlate. Now, this we can say, hey, what are we complaining about? America is This is not the map we should be looking at. Let's look at how much science was done 10 years ago compared with today. That's a trend line we can plot. Let's see what the trend is in science and shape the country boundaries according to that statistic. That'll tell you what the future will bring. Okay? Oh, by the way, uh, Western Europe is the purple shades, and the former Eastern Europe is the, is the blue shades there. So that's how Europe is. So Europe is looking strong. There's a particle accelerator research paper is a part of that data set. Okay? Japan is huge. Three biggest economies in the world is the European Union, uh, United States, Japan, European Union. These are the three biggest economies in the world. Now let's plot change in research papers. You ready? There it is. Look how much bigger China got. Japan is still holding strong. Western Europe is even bigger. Africa is even smaller. What's that going on in South America? Oh my gosh, Brazil. Oh, when I, when I just say Brazil, what's the first thing that comes to your head? Nuts. Someone said soccer, any of them? Okay, so I, I heard someone say a bikinis, right? The tongue bikini. Yes. Yeah, so that's Brazil. That's what we think of when we think of Brazil. Do you know that's the third largest aerospace industry in the world? Did you know that most regional jets you've ever been on were made, manufactured, and designed in Brazil? That Brazil has an aerospace industry that employs 30,000 people? Brazil invented an airplane that runs on alcohol? That's Brazil. We're wearing blinders in this world, people. And these blinders prevent us from seeing the actual story that's out there. Yes, we're doing some isolated good science, but the trend line looks bad. I can tell you that the tour I got of this campus and the mission statement that your president had brought forth to this institution leaves me highly positively thinking about the future. But it may be that what's going on here has to be sort of duplicated elsewhere. But I can tell you, other campuses I've been on, they're not thinking that way. They're not thinking of the role and the importance of science and technology as engines of economic growth that the 21st century will require if you want to compete on that world stage. So, the thought is, professionally, I'm an astrophysicist, but I care about all science. Because science cross-pollinates and makes new ideas and new inventions that transform how we live. We come to expect that from one week to the next, something new is going to show up that will transform your life. The product of somebody's genius, like Steve Jobs. Somebody who, who, who wants to explore into the unknown. The unknown of ideas, the unknown of, of products, the unknown of how to apply new scientific principles to new ways that you would live your life. So I want to leave you with a mission statement that all the sciences need support, not just one over another. And by the way, when you're not doing science, you want to sort of live an enriched life. That's where the rest of the humanities comes in. The, the song, the art, the dance, the art, the sculptures throughout the city. I'm I wasn't driving the car because I would have surely crashed into something looking at all the sculptures going by. Yeah. They're like, like, like they're, they're preventing me from paying attention to the road. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I don't know. But uh, my brother is an artist. I greatly value the totality of what culture is. Because think about it. What do historians study apart from war. They studied that which has made culture throughout the history of this world. And the three things that contributed most to culture are, is the sciences and the arts. Everything else is just some other activity of human beings that some, some of that you need, but in terms of the future you want to bring upon us, it's actually in our collective hands. Thank you all for being here.